All right, here's a little video on how to set up a simple quarantine for a new snake. Um, whenever you get a new snake, if you have reptiles currently, you should be quarantining that new reptile. Minimum 30 days, but 90 days is a better practice. It's especially important if you're bringing in like animals. So if you have boas and pythons already and you're bringing in a boa and python, um, to add to your collection, it's extra important to quarantine it, but even uh, dissimilar reptiles could spread mites and parasites and whatnot. So it's important regardless. It costs about $50 for everything you see here, and really there's only about $10 more to quarantine a snake than to just set up its permanent cage because you can use the heat pad and the thermostat in its permanent cage. There are six factors I'm going to be pointing to and talking about when I show you the things I've done here. Um, those are heat, humidity, hygiene, and then three types of security. That's biological security that means actually quarantining the snake and making sure that pathogens don't go back and forth. Escape security is obviously just making sure that you don't get, let your snake get out in the process of quarantine. And feeling is about the snake. So feeling the snake should feel safe and secure because that promotes uh, feeding and all sorts of just general well-being. So at this point, I guess I should point out uh, biological security. The reason we're tucked into this awkward little corner is because I have this snake set up um, as far as practically possible away from any of my other reptiles. So this is in a completely separate room and it's got to be here for 90 days. So it's kind of out of the way, tucked behind a bookshelf in my office. So biological security means setting up your animals far away from your existing animals, but that also means that you need to be careful not to let things go back and forth. So separate set of equipment, don't let your tongs, don't let your paper towels go back and forth. And that also means things such as, um, I deal with this snake last. So I go and take care of all my established animals and then deal with this snake last. And then I go and take a shower and everything's done. So that's biological uh, security. Escape security, this tub that I'm using right here is um, it has built-in latches and I think that's the best way on a small snake to make sure you have a secure tub. You could put clamps or books on top of it, but I just think that latches are better. And then the other thing that's important with security in this snake is the feeling of security and this tub is important for that because this is an opaque sided tub. And it's got a translucent top, so it gets a dim daylight cycle. However, it's not like in a big clear open tub, which sometimes stresses animals out. So if you're feeling the security for your snake, I would say that an opaque or translucent translucent sided tub is better and one that is not like generously sized for the snake so just moderately sized so that's what we're going to talk about here and those follow the three types of security pretty well let me show you what I got set up in here so the inside of this box is really attending to the heat humidity and hygiene so this box also has hold on the side rather than being open top that helps me with the humidity in this sna this snake and the other thing about it here is that everything but the substrate is plastic meaning it's easily disinfected and the substrate can be thrown away so everything in here is disposable and it'll help you in case you have any parasites or mites and something like that um, most snakes I would be using paper towels initially because it's easy to see any parasites or mites on however this snake um, is a dumeril's bow and they like to burrow so I have it some mulch substrate, but again, this is kiln dried mulch substrate and I will be disposing of it at the end. But if you see in here, sometimes the snake's got a pretty good food response. Maybe she'll come out. We'll see. She knew we were here, so she came out of her burrow a little bit. But as you can see, this is just a very simple setup. I have a water bowl that's attached to the side using a plastic ring. I have a humid box because she was shedding recently. I have mulch substrate and I have a little bit of paper bag and this just simulates leaf litter and she likes to hide under it. You can see she's always hopeful about a rat. She'll come right out at you. Which is kind of funny because the reason I have her is that she's supposedly a problem feeder. But so this is basically how I set it up. It's simple and really this enclosure could take care of the snake indefinitely until it outgrew it. Um, but this enclosure is just a good simple way to quarantine your snake and I'm going to show you how I deal with the heat. You see here, I have a heat mat with a thermostat taped right to the heat mat with electrical tape and then I just set the tub on half of it. So that's how I have it heated and over here I have a thermostat that's set to 89 degrees. If this was a ball python I'd be setting it to about 92 but these like it a little cooler. But like I said, guys, this is all I'm doing for a quarantine setup. She's been in here for a little over a month. She's doing great. Um, and she can stay in here ind indefinitely until she outgrows it. But I think that pretty soon I'm going to move her over into a tub 
in another about six, eight weeks. But yeah, you guys should be quarantining your snakes. It'll protect your collection and ensure that everybody stays happy and healthy.